Hello, everybody. This is Libertas. Welcome back to another episode of the Liberty Man channel. Tonight, I'm going to show you about the first Thanksgiving under the Constitution. We're told today that we have a thing called separation of church and state, meaning the, well, what has become to mean that the Bible has no place in the government of America. And if a church says something contrary to what the government wants them to say, then they will punish and penalize the church. So there again, the church is getting involved with this, with the state is getting involved with what the church can and cannot say, which is a violation of the First Amendment. So anyway, this is, should be an eye opener to everyone. And the reason it's such a big deal is when George Washington sent a letter to the, to the different colonies, well, states at that point, during the ratification debates for the Constitution. In 1787, they, the Constitutional Convention had sent a draft to the, to the 13 colonies for them to vote on whether or not they would accept that and become a new nation under that Constitution. And that letter was extremely beneficial, even more so, many said, than the famous federal papers, which federal papers is a great thing, but we forget that the federal Federalist Papers was to one state, just the state of New York, to convince them to sign on to the Constitution as proposed, the very anti-federalist state at the time. But what George Washington said, and I'm gonna paraphrase it, he said to all of these different states, and it started out as a personal letter, but it got circulated around real fast. He said, we're not claiming direct revelation for this work, but only an atheist can fail to trace the finger of God through the document. So when I read that, I was astounded with what he had said, but I had been trained studying American history in a book that I wrote called In God We Trusted, the U.S. Constitution and the Restoration of America. And I won a national award for this book for the best book of its kind. And to my knowledge, it's still the only book in America that claims to be able to restore the country. And while we're at it, my first book, I just got a new shipment of these. It's a little book. It's pretty thin. It's called Bible Study 101, Keys to Understanding the Word of God. So many times when we read the Bible, we get frustrated with it and we put it away because it gets confusing because sometimes we can't understand it. So this little book is what I used to teach at the university level and what some would classify as a doctorate level course on how to study the scriptures. And so I took that, that college course that I used to teach and I put it into what I call the first grade edition. So, and you'll see when we get through this of why that's important as well. So, in 1789, the United States and Congress decided that they wanted the president to proclaim a day of thanksgiving. So, we're going to look at this. And it says right here, Thanksgiving Proclamation, October 1789. And let's see. Yeah, here it says right here, both houses of Congress by their joint committees requested me. Okay, so this was a request of Congress 
I'm going to just read it to you just like it is. It's very simple. It's one page. And then I'm going to tell you a little backstory about it. And then I'm going to go into detail about what I mentioned before about Americans not recognizing the finger of God through the documents. So this is a Thanksgiving proclamation given on 3rd October of 1789 by the President of the United States of America, a proclamation, whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. And this quotations here is what the Congress requested him to do. Now, therefore, I, George Washington, do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being, who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, and that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation, for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence which we experienced in the course and conclusion of the late war. For the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty, which we have since enjoyed, for the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and particularly the national one now lately instituted. For the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed, and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge, and in general for all the great and various favors which he hath been pleased to confer upon us, and also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations, and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions, to enable us all, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually, to render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed, to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as have shown kindness unto us, and to bless them with good government, peace, and concord, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue, and to, in, to end the increase of science among them and us, and generally to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best. Given under my hand at the city of New York, the third day of October in the year of our Lord, 1789, George Washington. So we are going to, now we're going to go look at this in a different light.
this is the same document. Well, let's just go back to where I was over here. I'll put these two side by side. Going to expand them down if we can. It's not going to let us. Anyway, I decided that I would take the principles of this book right here on how to study the Bible and recognize certain phrases and clauses and see if I could trace the finger of God through the document. Meaning, what did God say about it? Now, the joint committees that they're talking about here was when the, the Senate and the House of Representatives, they come together for a joint resolution to do something. So in this case, it was to declare a day of public thanksgiving and prayer. The significance of this is, is the joint committee to form the Bill of Rights had just completed the final wording of the First Amendment, which was what was to become the First Amendment by Fisher Ames. And they thought, and that completed the Bill of Rights that they were going to send out to the states for their ratification of this. But they thought that the final wording of the First Amendment given us religious liberty was such a monumental occasion that they needed to stop everything and have a day of thanksgiving and prayer. So it says here, whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, Genesis 12, 22. It says over here, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. To obey his will. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the work, all the earth is mine. To be grateful for his benefits. Psalm 103, 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And humbly to implore his protection and favor, Deuteronomy 8, verse 16, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. Second Chronicles chapter seven. Verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. And whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested to me to, this is important, to recommend to the people, recommend. This is not a mandate that you have to go and do this. The government can't mandate anything. But they're recommending to the people of the United States. We would really like to see you do this by our joint efforts of both houses of Congress and the president signing off on this to have a day of public thanksgiving. So what is a day of public thanksgiving? Leviticus 22, 29. And when ye will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. Free will offer. And prayer, 1 King 9, 3. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house, which thou hast built to put my name there forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually to observe by acknowledging with grateful hearts, 
the many signal favors of Almighty God. Psalms 126.3. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Exodus chapter 18, 21 and 23. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people, able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of 50, and rulers of tens, Republican government, city, county, state, nation. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people, able men. Well, I messed that one up. But it says in the text that if you do this, you will prosper. If you choose men of this capability, if you don't choose men of this capability, you will surely go the way of all other nations. And then also Psalm 128, 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Now, therefore, I, President George Washington, do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being. Psalms 8, 1. To the chief musician. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name on all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Who is the beneficent author of all the good, Genesis 1, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning was the sixth day. That was, that is, or that will be. First Corinthians, first, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. That we may, that, that we may then all unite. Psalms 133, 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And in rendering unto him our, succeed, our sincere and humble thanks. First Chronicles 16, verse 8. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. And say ye, save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name, and glory in thy praise. For his kind, and for his care and protection of the people of this country, previous to their becoming a nation. Exodus 13, 3. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of the hand of the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leaven, leavened bread be eating, eaten. For the signal and manifold mercies, Psalms 25, 6. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness for they have been ever of old. And the favorable interpositions of providence, which we experienced in the courts and conclusion of the late war. Psalms 1848. He delivered me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. For the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty, which we have enjoyed. The entire chapter of Deuteronomy chapter 8. 
So let's go down here. Well, we're just going to save that for last. We're going to come back to that one. For the people, peaceable and rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and peculiarly the national one now instituted. 1 Timothy 2.2. 2. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For the civil and religious liberty which we are blessed. 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge. Proverbs 1 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And again, 1 Timothy 2 2, or 2 Timothy 2 2, sorry. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And in general, for all the great and various favors which he hath been pleased to confer upon us. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 22. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. And also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known, to, known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And ruler of nations. Deuteronomy 10, 17, for the Lord, your God, is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. And beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions. Numbers 12, 11. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and where we have sinned. Speaking in the name of all of Israel. To enable us, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several and relative duties, and punctually, Ecclesiastes 12.13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. To render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed. Psalm 33:12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen to be his own for his own inheritance. To protect and to guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as have shown kindness unto us, and to bless them with good government, peace, and concord. Deuteronomy 4 6. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. We the people. To promote the knowledge and practice of true religion. James 1.27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. And also, and 
virtue, pure religion and virtue, 2 Peter 1, 5. And besides this, give all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. And to increase and the increase of science among them and us. Leviticus 26, 4. Then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. Ecclesiastes 1, 13. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. Learn the laws of nature's God. And generally to grant unto all mankind such a de degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best. Nehemiah 9, 6. Thou, even thou, O Lord alone, thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worships thee. Given under my hand at the city of New York, the third day of October, in the year of our Lord, 1789, which means that this was dated 1,789 years from the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what in the year of our Lord, 1789, literally means. That this was the reckoning of time under A.D., Anno Domini, means 1,789 years from the birth of Christ. Now let's read Deuteronomy chapter 8. And all the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that a man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chastens thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack in anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills they may dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then shalt thou bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then their heart be filled up and forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thy heart, my power 
in the might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that give thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto you, unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. That's a mouthful, folks. But that's the first Thanksgiving proclamation of the United States of America. So when you trace the finger of God through the document, in this instance, there were 37 individual verses, not including the whole entire chapter of Deuteronomy chapter 8. America's lost its way. We don't remember how we got here. We're told that Thanksgiving was... You know, some pilgrims and Indians sitting around singing Kumbaya and had nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'm here to tell you, the truth of the story is right here. And all the divine goodness of God, the pilgrim's journey was absolutely miraculous. All the things that God says here that he did for the children of Israel in Exodus or in Deuteronomy, reminding them that you came out of Egypt with nothing, and you're fixing to go into a land filled with milk and honey. And if you'll just obey my rules, once you prosper, because everything you do is going to prosper, it's going to multiply. It's going to multiply. If you turn away from me and you walk, if you think you're smarter than me, then you're going to lose it all. And that's kind of where. America is at today. We've lost our way as a people. Now, some people haven't. I know I haven't. I've been fighting this fight and ringing the Liberty Bell for 41 and a half years. It'll be 42 years on uh, Palm Sunday. It will be 42 years. So 1980. Traditional Palm Sunday is when I swore an oath. Anyway, that's the first Thanksgiving under the Constitution, and it's one of the most impressive sermons that you'll ever read if you know how to read the original writings of the United States. So with that in mind, God bless. You're the best. If you want to know more about what I just told you, you can get my book, In God We Trusted, the U.S. Constitution in the restoration of America at our website at libertyman.online. That's libertyman.online. And then to be able to trace the finger of God, you need to be able to understand the word of God. So I use the principles in this book to go back and search the phrases that were used in the proclamation to find the verse that they were taken from. So this book will teach you how to do that. So with that in mind, we'll close it in prayer. God, we're so thankful to have this country that we live in. We're so thankful for your blessings and your goodness and that we look to you for our guidance and our strength and our supplications so that we can once again make this a nation rightly so, back to its original roots, and one that is truly blessed by you, because our people worship you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. See y'all next time.